What's going on everybody, King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today I'll be having a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Dark Knights Metal, Batman Earth Negative 32, The Dawnbreaker, and Green Lantern Hell Jordan. And so here we have Hell Jordan and Dawnbreaker posing out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figures, let's actually run through their accessories. We'll have a look at Dawnbreaker first. Dawnbreaker only comes with one accessory, and that is his construct, which has the octopus tentacles and the bats. That looks really nice in the translucent plastic, and then he comes with a McFarlane display stage. Then we move on to Hell Jordan, where he comes with two accessories. We do get a jetpack for Hell Jordan, which looks really nice. It's a constructed jetpack with thrust coming out of it. And then we get a constructed boxing glove, which is absolutely Hell Jordan's forte. And then, of course, he comes with a McFarlane display stand. And then together, they do come with this really awesome display base where we have a constructed missile, some Green Lantern emblems, and then the tentacles from the Dawnbreaker. So overall, really do like the accessories these guys come with. So with that out of the way, guys, let's actually move on to their details. And so here we have a closer look at the Dawnbreaker. And I'm not going to go too much into detail about Dawnbreaker here. He is essentially a reissued figure. If you click on the link right above, you will be linked to my original review of the Dawnbreaker, which essentially they're the exact same figure, just with some minor paint application differences. You can see his teeth are more like he's making a face, he's making more of a snarl, but it's the same sculpt. This one just has better paint apps. Uh, I don't know why the new one has lesser paint apps, but that just goes to show you the difference between this version and the original version and he has a lot of detail again I'm not going to go too much into it because I went had a more in-depth look at the Dawnbreaker which you can check out in the links in the cards above which I really did like the way this figure came out the first time and having him in hand here he's a really nice figure and there's really hardly any uh, bad paint application to speak of except for maybe right here I don't know if you guys can see that but he has like a metallic green coating over the green plastic and then right there there seems to be a missing piece of metallic almost as if there was like a piece of tape right there and then when they sprayed it and peeled the tape off that small section didn't get any metallic paint it's not prevalent anywhere else that I can see so there is that but really do like the detail on Dawnbreaker here, especially the belt. He looks really snazzy, really do like the, all the detail throughout him. And the metallic green that they use on him, mm, just still so beautiful, I love it. I think it's the same metallic green. Maybe there might be a, a slight shade difference, maybe there's a sheen difference. I honestly can't tell you just by looking at the two figures, but yeah, still a really, really nice figure really do like the Dawnbreaker and if you missed out on the Dawnbreaker originally this is a nice opportunity you should pick him up so with that out of the way guys let's actually have a closer look at Hell Jordan and so here we have a closer look at Hell Jordan and I think McFarlane has done a fantastic job with Hell Jordan's face sculpt I know there's a lot of ways they could have messed this head sculpt up but when you really look at this figure this is Hell Jordan there is no getting around it McFarlane captured the look and likeness of Hell Jordan perfectly. I absolutely love the sculpt on this figure. Really do like the way they painted his mask and you can see they did add some finer detail to his mask. Something a lot of figures don't actually do. They just kind of sculpt the edges of the mask. This one kind of sculpted like a brow on it because you can see it's a really sharp brow. Kind of like Nightwing or Batman's cowl how it has that sharp uh, eyebrow. This Hell Jordan does have it. And I really do like the fact that they kept his mask small as it's supposed to be. Hell Jordan doesn't wear a huge mask and this is a really good representation of Hell Jordan. I especially love the way his hair curls. Almost like Superman's curly cue. I like the fact that it's this really rich shade of brown. Just overall lovely, lovely looking figure. This is one of my favorite Hell Jordan figures. I just barely opened them up and he's already contended to the NECA and the DC Universe Classics Hell Jordan. Really, really liking how he came out. Now, aside from the head, you would think that Hell Jordan is an entirely new sculpt, but that isn't the case. We've actually seen the sculpt before, and he uses the exact same sculpt as Jon Stewart, and that actually surprised me that you can 
use the same sculpt for two different characters and make it look so different. Now when you actually look really close, yeah, you can see that they share the exact same torso, the everything, with the exception of the head, everything on them is the same. So yeah, that is something to note that Hell Jordan is a straight up reissue of Jon Stewart. Now I think what makes him a little bit different is the fact that we have a green torso rather than green, black, black, and then black all the way down to the green boots. It is enough of a contrast to make you think that they're different figures, like especially on the back because you don't see too much of the detailing on Jon Stewart because his is mostly black. Hell Jordan here you can see more of the panel lining which looks really nice. I do like these little notches right there. I would go more into detail but I did go have a very thorough look at Jon Stewart and yeah really do like that body. I'm actually glad that they reuse it for Hell Jordan because it works. That's This is one of the few times I think reuse is acceptable because after all they are part of a team and their uniform should look similar really do like the greens they are almost the exact same green i think john stewart's is a little bit darker but for the most part the ant the lantern emblem is clean really do like the way this came out i do like the fact that this is molded green molded green molded green with black paint and then the gauntlets are molded in white so i do like that and then of course you do get his ring right here on his finger and i do want to say that it's just a green blob which is unfortunate i would have liked to see some detailing in that ring really do like the way his costume came out really like that i i love the john stewart figure and hell jordan is my second favorite green lantern so of course i'm gonna love this figure it looks really really good and i think what really makes it stand out is this really nice head sculpt i mean they did a fantastic job sculpting john stewart and now they did a fantastic job sculpting Hell Jordan. You can't ask for anything else for McFarlane to be quite honest. So with that out of the way guys, let's actually get Hell Jordan and the Dawnbreaker compared to other figures you may have in your collection. Here we have Hell Jordan and Dawnbreaker posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Hell Jordan and Dawnbreaker posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. Here we have Hell Jordan and Dawnbreaker posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. And so here we have Hell Jordan and Dawnbreaker posed next to the McFarlane Toys Jon Stewart and the original McFarlane Toys Dawnbreaker. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually have a look at their articulation. Now, if you want a more thorough look at Dawnbreaker, you can check out my review on him. For Hell Jordan, we'll have a look at his articulation. For the most part, they have the same points of articulation, just Hell Jordan's is less restrictive. Moving Dawnbreaker off to the side, Hell Jordan does have a really nice ball joint in the head. He does let him look up so he can get him in really good flight poses. He can look down, head tilt fantastic head tilt by John, by Hell Jordan here so we get really good rotation and movement so really do like that. Arms are on ball joints. They are a little stiff on mine but they do pivot forward and back, up and down, out to the side, better than horizontal. I do like that. They go all the way around. We do have a bicep swivel which works really good. Double bend here at the elbow. A little stiff on mine but we do get Full range right there and then we do have a ball joint here at the wrist so we do have up and down movement we can rotate that for in and out and then of course it does rotate on that peg we have a ball joint here at the torso which does let him lean back he can crunch forward a little bit but not too too much does tilt to the side nicely rotates then we have another ball joint down here so he can arch back leans forward and not the best to be quite honest with you his legs do of course kick out way way high i do like that they also kick back to about right there out to the side no problem he does have a slight thigh swivel which i do like that double bend here at the knee looking really good he does have a swivel here at the ankle he has a hinge that goes forward and back and then we have forward facing pin for rocker ankle or you can rotate that joint to give you a true rocker ankle so i do like that 
And then of course, we do have a very generous Tohin. So overall, Eldrin has some exceptional articulation. Dawnbreaker has some good articulation, but again, he is a little more limited than Hell Jordan. So with that out of the way, guys, let's actually get these guys posed for my final thoughts, and then we'll wrap up this review. And so here we have Hell Jordan and the Dawnbreaker posed for my final thoughts. And overall, I really do like this set. It is a little bit disappointing that we got another Dawnbreaker. There's really nothing that separates Dawnbreaker from the original release, and I think the original release had stronger paint apps, to be quite honest. The Construct is, of course, a nice little addition, but the original one came with that too. So overall, Dawnbreaker here isn't that exciting of a figure. Now, Hal Jordan, even though he does reuse parts from the Jon Stewart figure, I think it actually works in his favor. There were a lot of lines that you could match with Hell Jordan that you could also match with Jon Stewart and the reuse of the torso was very very smart on McFarlane's part because you got two characters for the price of one and normally when companies make Hell Jordan they normally make Jon Stewart on that same buck and I'm really glad that they did go that route even though Jon Stewart is normally a bigger character than Hell Jordan most of the time they're drawn about the same size so I really do like this and that face sculpt on Hell Jordan just like with Jon Stewart it's perfect when I think of Hell Jordan this is the ideal Hell Jordan I think of so overall this set is fantastic if you're a Green Lantern fan and if you miss out on the original Dawnbreaker now, I think the one thing that does separate this set is that really awesome base that they come with. It is fantastic. I love the sculpt work on that. But I don't think the base justifies the purchase of this set if you already have Dawnbreaker. I, I can see people who missed out on the original Dawnbreaker picking this set up and being happy. But this is just like the Red Death, uh, the, what was it? the Nightwing and Red Hood pack where we got one really cool figure and then an obvious repaint of an older figure. This is the exact same thing and that comes with the territory of collecting. So overall I can't be too angry at this set because it is a really solid set to be quite honest. If you are going to pick up Dawnbreaker and Hell Jordan here, it will run you about $40, which in the retrospect that's only $20 a figure. I would like to see McFarlane release a single Hell Jordan with maybe newer constructs, but even if this is the only way to get Hell Jordan, I think that's perfectly fine, especially because the Dawnbreaker was originally a Walmart exclusive, it was a limited exclusive, but then the, when it hit all other retails, they really didn't stock too much of the Dark Knight's metal figures, so I'm really happy that they did give us another chance to get them. So overall, really happy with this set, and if you are looking for it, you can find it at GameStop, Target, Walmart, Big Bad Toy Store, or Amazon where I picked mine up. With that being said guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, go check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other DC Multiverse videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments and if it fits in my collection, I'll gladly take a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for a new and exciting action figure photos and as always, Ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time guys, I'll see you later. Take care everyone.